the pinnacle of motorsport. Four words that represent a sport that's been around for decades, and will be here for decades to come. Formula One. However, if you're a new fan, or just hearing those words, you're most likely confused. So let me explain Formula One in a simple-ish way. Formula One has its origins all the way back in the early 1900s, in Europe specifically. Back then, around the 1920s and 1930s, Europeans were just starting to race their cars, and they were racing them wherever they could, with the races being defined by agreed upon rules called formulas. And there were a lot of formulas. However, a governing body called the Federation Internationale de Automobile or FIA, decided to organize these formulas, with Formula 1 being one specific formula that was established in 1946. However, these early Formula 1 races weren't part of an organized championship, but rather were just Grand Prix, or races, that happened throughout a year. This lack of championship was dealt with in 1950, when the first Formula 1 World Championship was started. This first championship was only for the crown of Formula 1 World Drivers Champion. A champion was decided by which driver was able to get the most points by the end of a season. Points are awarded based on where a driver finished at the end of a race, with drivers higher up in the order getting more points. After a couple years of the Formula 1 championship, a second championship would be added in 1958. The second championship is called the Formula 1 World Constructors Championship. It's a championship between the teams who manufacture and race the cars for the title of F1 Constructors Champion. Like the Drivers' Championship, the team with the most points at the end wins the title. However, teams get points by adding up the total of points all their drivers have. Both championships are both still being held today with the only things changing being the rules and tracks between seasons. With the history and explanation of championships out the way, let's discuss what makes Formula 1 different from other motorsports. I'm going to start with the car itself. Formula 1 cars are open wheel single seaters, meaning the tires are outside the main body of the car and only have one seat. Formula 1 cars are some of the fastest racing cars in the world, mainly due to the high speeds F1 cars can achieve in corners. However, there are other factors such as electronics, their design, and tires. Formula 1 has used many different tires throughout the years, with two main types, slicks and groove tires. Slicks are generally faster than grooves since they have more area of contact onto a track, thus providing more grip. There are many different types of tires in F1 currently, five dry compounds and two wet compounds. The dry compounds are different from each other. The softer compounds provide more grip, but last a small amount of time, while harder compounds provide less grip, but last longer. As for wet tires, there's the intermediate and the wet tires. Intermediate is meant for when there is not that much water on track since they can usually move about 30 liters of waters per second. Wet tires on the other hand can move up to about 85 liters of water per second. Now then, the design. F1 cars are designed with three main things in focus. Aerodynamics, weight, and power. Aerodynamics in F1 are simply meant to reduce drag and improve stability. Power in F1 is mainly achieved via the engine. However, more recent years, power has been produced by electronic parts called the Energy Recovery System, or ERS. ERS recovers energy that would otherwise be lost, specifically heat and kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is lost when braking, and heat is lost while the engine is active. ERS is able to take about 50% of that lost energy and store it in a battery until the driver wants to use it. Once used, it gives more power to the car. Lastly, weight. 
F1 cars are designed to be as light as possible. The main reason, simply put, is so that the car accelerates fast and can reach higher top speeds. However, the design of the cars are limited by a set of rules called the Technical Regulations, which are also made by the FIA. Teams must follow these rules when designing and making an F1 car. The Technical Regulations cover everything about the car. Failure to meet or follow the rules comes with punishment by the FIA towards the offending team. Rules for punishment and other procedures in F1 are also made by the FIA and are in another document called the Formula One Sporting Regulations. Drivers, teams, and the FIA themselves must follow the sporting regulations to make sure F1 races happen properly and there is no deviation between races. Clearly, F1 teams can't just do what they wish. However, on top of being limited in terms of designing and manufacturing, they are also limited on how much money they are allowed to spend. In 2021, another regulation was added to limit how much money F1 teams are allowed to spend, called the Formula 1 Financial Regulations. The financial regulations are set so that there is a cost cap or a max amount of money that can be spent. The cost cap for the 2022 season is set so that within 21 races, the max amount of money is 140 million US dollars. However, if there's more than 21 races, the cost cap is increased by 1.2 million per race, and if there is less than 21, the cost cap is decreased by 1.2 million per race. However, only certain things are included in the cost cap, things like marketing, driver salaries, human resources, legal and financial activities, property costs, logistical costs, travel costs, and the top three paid staff in a team are excluded from the cost cap. Before I end this video, I want to quickly cover some other useful information. During the race, drivers must use two different dry compounds of tires unless wet tires or intermediates have already been used. The driver who sets the fastest lap during the race gets an extra point as long as they're in the top 10. Flags, like in many sports, are also used in F1. They are the yellow flag, which means caution. Normally indicates danger ahead, with two yellow flags meaning great danger. And a yellow flag with the letters SC indicate a car called the safety car has been deployed. Drivers have to follow the safety car while slowed down and cannot overtake the safety car or any other cars on track. The green flag means that the track is clear and drivers can continue the race or session as normal. The red flag indicates that the current session, race, or qualifying has been suspended and cars must return to an area called the pit lane immediately and stop. The blue flag means a faster car is approaching, usually shown when a car that is a full lap ahead is about a lap a car that is one lap down. The white flag means a slow moving vehicle is on track and the drivers must slow down. The black flag means a driver is disqualified and must return to the pits. If this flag is deployed, it is shown with the driver's number. The black and white flag indicates driver's behavior is unsportsmanlike and it will be shown with the driver's number. And it also is a warning to the driver to not repeat what they did or some other unsportsmanlike behavior or they will get the black flag next time around. The black flag with an orange circle means a car has a mechanical problem and they must return to the pits. When this flag is out, it will be shown with the driver's number yellow and red striped flag warns driver that the track surface ahead is slippery or has debris. Lastly, the black and white checkered flag signals the end of a session, race, or qualifying. Of course, there is still a lot of information out there that you can still learn about F1. After all, it's a sport with decades of history and change. There are many videos on Formula 1 covering many topics. However, 
I hope this video gives you a simple insight into Formula 1 so you can enjoy the pinnacle of motorsport without much confusion.